Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee, and I'm a board-certified emergency critical care veterinary specialist and toxicologist. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about pancreatitis today. It sounds like a scary, weird name, but really important because every single day at the ER Vet, I diagnose a patient with pancreatitis. We'll be right back after these messages. As a veterinarian, I'll admit it, I reek at the end of a workday. I've been peed on, pooped on, puked on, and have all types of odiferous body liquids, usually from the back end, splashed on me. But I still love my veterinary patients and my own pets. But if you have a cat like me, you don't want to smell like them. As a veterinarian and cat owner, I know that nothing smells worse than a wet litter box. Luckily, Arm & Hammer has a solution. New Absorb X cat litter made with desert dry minerals. It absorbs wetness in seconds, taking that wet odor out of the pitcher. Go to armandhammer.com slash bounty and get $4 off your box of quick absorbing Absorb X and have a nice dry day. New Absorb X from Arm & Hammer. More power to you. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. Today, I wanted to talk specifically for all you cat owners out there. I wanted to talk about a diagnosis called pancreatitis. Now, I will say I diagnose one cat a week with pancreatitis. And I know the name sounds really nebulous. It is a weird nebulous medical problem. We've known about canine pancreatitis for decades. And I will say different species get inflammation of their pancreas for different reasons. Now, humans will get pancreatitis too. But that's typically from alcoholism, drugs, or from weird things like gallbladder stones. Dogs get pancreatitis from fattening food. So during Thanksgiving, the holidays, when people are giving more turkey skin or turkey meat or bones to their pet, then I end up seeing pancreatitis more. Cats, well, I hate to break it to you, but cats get pancreatitis for no known reason at all, which is why it's so important and why I wanted to talk about it today. Now, what exactly is pancreatitis? Pancreatitis is just a fancy way of saying inflammation of the pancreas. Anytime you see the word titus, it usually means inflammation, by the way. The pancreas is actually located right behind your cat's stomach. So if you can imagine your cat from the side, it's almost right behind the rib cage. And it's really important for multiple reasons. Now, in a previous episode of ER Vet, we've talked about diabetes mellitus, which is so common in cats nowadays because of the growing epidemic of obesity that we see. Well, the pancreas has two main important functions. One is to make insulin, which helps push sugar into the cells to help feed the cells. And when your body doesn't produce any insulin from the pancreas, that's what results in diabetes. I'm not going to talk about that today, but I encourage you to check out that previous episode on diabetes mellitus that we previously recorded on ER Vet. The other function of the pancreas is to help break down fat. The pancreas is really important for breaking down the fat in the gastrointestinal tract, and it also helps neutralize gastric acid in the stomach. Well, when the pancreas gets pissed off, it results in sudden inflammation because there's actually natural enzymes within this tiny organ, and it can actually start digesting itself. It sounds disgusting, but it can actually be life-threatening. It can result in a severe inflammation within the abdomen itself, something that we call peritonitis. 
Now, I will say as an emergency critical care veterinary specialist, most of the time when I see pancreatitis, it ranges. It can range from really mild where I'm treating it on an outpatient basis with just some fluids under the skin or really strong anti-vomiting medication and maybe some pain medication. But in severe cases, it can be life-threatening. And that's why I see it more because I'm at a 24-hour tertiary referral hospital. Without treatment, Pancreatitis can actually result in chronic scarring of the pancreas. And so we want to be really aggressive about treating it so it doesn't become a lifelong problem. Like I mentioned before, there's no known exact reason for pancreatitis. Some cats get it for no known reason. But I will tell you there's something called the triad or the triaditis that can cause it. Tri means three. So in cats, when I see it, it's usually from three things that are tied together. When the pancreas is inflamed, sometimes we can see that with underlying inflammatory bowel disease or even hepatitis. Remember how I said the word itis usually means inflammation? Well, it's where the liver or the intestines are pissed off too. When we see this, this means that your cat needs to be medically treated aggressively to help prevent long-term scarring. So again, in cats, we don't always know the reason why cats get pancreatitis, but it's probably multifactorial. It's probably from obesity, underlying liver disease like cholangiohepatitis, or underlying metabolic problems like inflammatory bowel disease. In a previous episode of ER Vet, I talked all about inflammatory bowel disease in cats, so make sure to check out that episode too. So how do you know if your cat has pancreatitis or not? Well, unfortunately, the signs are really subtle and they look like every single other symptom for when cats present to the ER vet. And that's typically not wanting to eat or having a decreased appetite, lying around or being more lethargic, vomiting more than usual. And as a side note, please know if your cat vomits more than once or twice a month, that is not normal, right? So if your cat is vomiting once a day or a couple of times a week, that is not normal. And there's some medical problem going on and you have to get to a vet right away. Okay, so again, decreased appetite, not wanting to eat, loping around, being really lethargic, vomiting more than normal, hiding in weird places, having belly pain when you pick your cat up, potentially having diarrhea in the litter box, having some muscle wasting, especially when you pet them over the back, breathing a little bit faster than usual. All of these are classic signs of pancreatitis. Now, in severe cases, it can actually result in icterus or jaundice. So if you notice a subtle yellow color to the tip of your cat's ears or the whites of their eyes, you want to rush to a vet right away because sometimes we can see secondary liver problems from this. Again, that's usually something called hepatic lipidosis. How are you going to diagnose pancreatitis? Well, I wish there was one easy test to diagnose it, but there isn't. Now, most of the time, we're going to rely on history, the information that you give us. If you change a new diet, if you all of a sudden noticed that your cat has been vomiting more frequently for the past couple of months, there's a lot of important questions that I want to ask. The next thing I'm going to use to determine if your cat has pancreatitis are the clinical signs. What am I finding on physical exam? And the third thing is blood work. Now, in a previous episode of ER Vet, I actually interviewed Dr. Garrett Pachtinger on what blood tests we do in the ER. That's a really important one because you want to make sure you know what you're paying for. Most of the time, I'm going to start with a complete blood count, and that looks specifically at what is happening in the bone marrow. It's going to look at the white and red blood cells, the platelet count. It's going to look to see if there's an infection in the body. The next important test is called a biochemistry panel, or what we lazily call a chem in the veterinary ER. This is going to look at the protein levels, the kidney and liver function, the liver enzymes, the salt balance, really, really important tests. The third test I'm going to do is usually a urinalysis. This is to look at how well your cat is concentrating and how well your cat's kidneys are working. The next test I'm going to do is something called a feline pancreatic lipase immunoreactivity test. Try saying that multiple times. Well, we abbreviate that FPLI. And I will say there's kind of pros and cons of this test. I only do this test a couple of times a year, but this is a blood test that helps evaluate the function of the pancreas. Now, there's definitely some limitations of this blood test. I will say the most important test that I end up doing to diagnose pancreatitis is actually abdominal ultrasound. But most vets don't have that in their veterinary clinic. Most of the time, you need a board-certified specialist like a radiologist or an internist to be able to determine if your cat has pancreatitis. And that's because the pancreas is tiny and really hard to see. 
Now, if your vet doesn't have that, sometimes they'll do x-rays. I do like doing x-rays because they look at the size of the organs. It lets you look at the gas pattern within the intestinal tract. But unfortunately, the pancreas typically doesn't show up on an x-ray unless it's really, really, really inflamed. So my go-to test is always the ultrasound. If your vet doesn't have this, please know that they can start the initial things. They can start the initial history with you. They can do a thorough examination on your cat. They can start the initial blood work. Again, that CBC, the biochemistry panel, that urine test, maybe that pancreatitis test. And if they don't get results with that, then the next step is potentially x-rays or ultrasound. So every single day when I work in the ER vet, I get referrals for ultrasound to look specifically for pancreatitis. When in doubt, please be aware a lot of these tests are really expensive. So a typical ultrasound is about $500, and that's why I recommend a board-certified veterinary radiologist do it. X-rays can range between $100 to $300. The blood work can be several hundred dollars. So we do want to do it step-by-step to work with you, but we always say the ultrasound is probably the most helpful test when it comes to diagnosing pancreatitis. We'll be right back and talk about how we treat pancreatitis and what the prognosis is right after these messages. As a dog owner and veterinarian, I spoil my own dog, Milo. Not only does he get to sleep on my bed, but he gets his pick of treats whenever we go to the pet store. I want to take great care of him as he pays it back tenfold in loyalty and affection. I want to keep him as happy and healthy as possible. That's why I like to give him a dental treat that offers more. Daily Dose is a two-in-one dual benefit dog chew that supports dental hygiene and full body health. With Daily Dose, your dog gets a daily dental scrub and powerful supplements to help with the biggest health concerns facing our dogs. Daily Dose was developed by veterinarians to be simple to use and super effective. Plus, dogs love the taste. It comes in four types, available for joint, skin, heart health, or calming. What I like about them, they have ingredients that I'd recommend as a veterinarian, and they're made in the USA. To help keep your dog happier and healthier, try Daily Dose because one chew a day may keep your veterinarian away. Visit yourpetsdailydose.com to save $3 on your first bag with promo code ERVET. That's E-R-V-E-T. It's more than a treat. It's a treatment. One chew a day for happier, healthier dog ears. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. We've been talking about pancreatitis, specifically in cats. And again, pancreatitis is massive inflammation of the pancreas. And this tiny, tiny organ in the body is super important. Again, really important for breaking down fat in the intestinal tract, really important for neutralizing gastric acid in the stomach and making insulin, which is important to prevent diabetes. We've talked about the classic signs of pancreatitis, basically what we call an ADR cat and ain't doing right. Something's wrong. Your cat's not eating. Your cat's hiding. Your cat's vomiting. When you see that, you want to get to a vet right away. And again, the sooner you get to a vet, the sooner we can diagnose it, and the sooner we can treat it, the less expensive it'll be for you. We've talked about doing specific tests, starting with blood work, maybe progressing to x-rays, potentially getting a referral to a specialist to do an ultrasound. And again, to me, the ultrasound is the most diagnostic way of diagnosing pancreatitis. So the important part, How do we treat it? Well, like I mentioned earlier, some cases of pancreatitis can be really mild. And sometimes I can treat that on an outpatient basis. What does that mean? That means I'm going to send your cat home and your cat may not need to be hospitalized. So when I do that, I typically give subcutaneous fluids. Now, for those of you guys who have ever given subcutaneous fluids at home, that's when you're using a sterile bag of fluids and giving it under the skin. They don't usually do this in human medicine because there's not as much space underneath the skin. Well, in dogs and cats, there's a ton of subcutaneous space. So a lot of times I can hydrate a cat by giving it subcutaneous fluids. The next thing I do is I'll usually give a strong anti-vomiting medication. 
basically the veterinary version of Zofran. So drugs like meropitant, which is called Serenia. This is something that I usually give the first injection in the vein, and this lasts for 24 hours. And I usually send cat owners home with a couple of days worth so their cats stop vomiting. The next important part is getting your cat to eat. Now, I'll talk about this in a future episode, but cats can only go about four to five days without eating anything at all before they'll go into liver failure. Yes, you heard me right. Dogs can starve for days to weeks without underlying internal damage. Don't get me wrong. They'll have problems from it. They can have a low protein, but cats can have a life-threatening liver shutdown from not eating. So if your cat doesn't eat for more than two to three days, you got to get to a vet right away, even if it's in the middle of the night and you have to get your ER vet. So the next part of treatment for the cat with pancreatitis, not only am I going to use fluids, not only am I going to use anti-vomiting medications, but I'm going to do appetite stimulants. Now, there are a couple of appetite stimulants out there. One is a drug called mirtazapine. And this drug affects the serotonin in your body. When we give it to a cat, it increases their serotonin and makes them eat more. They basically get the munchies. Now, there's a transdermal form of mirtazapine, which means for all you people who can't pill your cat, myself included, you can actually smear some into the inside of your cat's ear to stimulate them to eat. Now, you should never do this unless it's recommended by a veterinarian because sometimes something's going on and we have to do a physical examination first. But please know there is a transdermal mirtazapine you can use. Otherwise, you can pill it also. The next part of treatment of pancreatitis is going to be pain medication. If you've ever had a family member who's been hospitalized for pancreatitis, it hurts. It causes a lot of belly pain. So I usually treat it with a medication called buprenorphine, which is a morphine-like medication. Now, again, some cases can be mild and some cases can be treated at home. In other words, outpatient where your cat goes home with you. But in more moderate cases, you do actually need to hospitalize your cat. Now, that can cost several thousand dollars. And that's why it's important that you be prepared for any ER emergency. In a previous episode of ER Vet, I talked with Dr. Ernie Ward about how you can save money through the ER. And one of the best recommendations is by getting pet insurance. So please do your research. You always want to get pet insurance earlier in life because it doesn't cover pre-existing problems. What do I mean by that? Little soapbox tangent. If your cat is diagnosed with pancreatitis today, You can't just sign up for pet insurance because now it's already pre-existing. So if your cat has another flare-up of pancreatitis in three years, it probably won't be covered, okay? So when in doubt, you always want to get it earlier than later. All right, back to treatment of pancreatitis. In severe cases, in other words, your cat is vomiting profusely. Your cat is clinically really dehydrated. Your cat's in shock. Your cat's painful. Your cat has a low blood pressure. Then you have to hospitalize your cat. And I generally recommend it be done at a 24-7 facility when they're on IV fluids. So what am I going to do in the hospital versus sending you home? Well, the benefit is I'm actually going to put an IV catheter in to help hydrate your cat. I'm going to hydrate them with IV fluids or in rare, rare cases, an IV protein. I can give IV medications like that strong anti-vomiting medication. I can use IV antacids to decrease the amount of gastric acid or the gastric reflux that's happening. I can use appetite stimulants. I can monitor your cat's blood pressure and salt balance really well. And in severe cases, I'll actually put in a temporary feeding tube. Now, I know a lot of humans have ethical decisions on whether or not they want a feeding tube or not. But in veterinary medicine, it's really different. I put in a feeding tube almost once a day in the ER vet. It's very commonly done in the emergency room. And I will say I ethically do not believe in force feeding dogs and cats. In other words, you syringing food into their mouth because it really ruins their bond to you. They run away from you. They don't want to be syringed food. There's a reason why they're not eating to begin with. That's why I'm actually a huge advocate of putting in a temporary feeding tube that usually goes into their nostril, into the back of their mouth, down their esophagus, down the tube that goes from their mouth to their stomach and into their stomach. They do have to wear one of those funnel hats or what we call an Elizabethan or e-collar to prevent themselves from scratching up that tube. I also have to take an x-ray to make sure that tube's in the right place and not in the airway before I use it. But the benefit of having a feeding tube is remember cats have to have adequate nutrition or they can go into liver failure. That's why it's so important. In severe cases of pancreatitis, sometimes I'll actually use medications to help the clotting. 
I'll use plasma transfusions, or I'll give injections of vitamin K. In rare, rare cases, they may require surgery if there's a pancreatic abscess, or there's a gallbladder obstruction, or gallbladder stones, or gallbladder cancer. So again, this can be more complex, and in severe cases, we do need to hospitalize. Ultimately, please know that the outcome for pancreatitis, as scary as I just made it sound, is actually fair to good. In other words, we can treat this with supportive care, but unfortunately, it can be costly to treat. That's why I always say, with any disease, especially with pancreatitis or poisoning cases, the sooner you and your vet diagnose it, the less expensive it is to treat. If you wait until your cat is really, really sick and shocky and has a low blood pressure, it's been two or three days, they're gonna require more intensive care. They may have more inflammation to their liver. They may be jaundiced. They may need a feeding tube right away. So when in doubt, you always wanna get to a vet or an ER vet sooner than later. Well, that brings me to the end of today's show. Find me at drjustinelee.com, on Facebook or Instagram at drjustinelee, or email me your pet questions at drjustine at petliferadio.com. With that, we want to thank our producer, Mark Winter, for making this show possible. See you at the next episode. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on petliferadio.com.